be back. It does feel it's in real, real life with human beings. I'm not quite adjusted yet, but we're going to get there. <laughs> So, Dr. DeSalvo, how are you? I'm great. You must call me Karen. Okay. 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 Um, so, it's been a long two years for a number of different reasons, but one I've been reflecting on a lot when preparing for this is two years ago, Dr. Feinberg was out here kind of giving the spiel about what Google Health was and what you guys were about to build, and you joined shortly after. Um, and a lot has happened since. Dr. Feinberg recently left. <laughs> you guys are up to some different, you've, you've restructured a bit. What's, give me the, give me the, what's, ha what's happening with the transition? How's it going? <laughs> it's going great. Um, David was here a couple of years ago. We're super excited about his opportunity with Cerner. And I'm personally really thankful that he recruited me to Google. As you said, I joined in December of 2019. Shortly thereafter, the pandemic um, unfolded across the world. And just like everybody in their health systems, we were on a learning journey about how we could make an impact on the health of billions of people around the world. What are the skills that we have, like organizing information for public health, for consumers, and kind of tech and tools like AI, and, and applying that, um, in the pandemic's case, um, uh, for COVID. We have continued, though, in the background. Um, our work uh, continues to grow in health across Google. And I think what you're seeing in this next iteration of our journey is based on what we've learned across the pandemic and based upon sort of how we see that people are turning to us in those everyday moments. We think about health as an all of Google uh, enterprise, that it's not a department, it's not a product, it's really all the ways that we can make a difference um, for consumers. And we've made so much progress, uh, in the, even in the non-COVID things in the last few years, and really grateful to many partners who have been helping us learn about those things on the front lines. Yeah, so I guess I'm curious where that leaves you. You know, you're at the helm of this organization that's, you know, now dispersed back into the other projects in Google. At, what, what's kind of been your focus? What, what is, if you had to sum it up in a sentence, because I have a really hard time of doing this in articles, like what is Google's overall goal when it comes to healthcare? Our overall goal, I'll make it easy for you, is to help billions around the world be healthy. And that is a big audacious goal. Um, and it also implies for us, Lydia, that it's everyone everywhere so we have a value-laden approach where we don't want anyone to be left behind. The, the work that we can do, uh, often with consumers, for example, is really reach billions of people. We have many billion user platforms. And my experience with those, as I've said a minute ago, is very much in the pandemic space, though clearly we have a lot of other health areas where we work. And you were asking about sort of my experience coming. I joined the company in um, December 2nd, 2019. Uh, well, these are things that we remember um, when, when we have an important milestone in our lives. And I was really excited to step into the company. We're doing some great work, like um, building a tool for electronic health records that sits on top called uh, Care Studio. That was one of the wow things that got me super excited about joining. So there's a lot of great work we're doing for the healthcare system. But on my first day, David asked if I would talk to YouTube and help them think about standing up health information that they wanted to do on their surface, which led us to um, working with that um, surface area, the, the, the YouTube, which is not only important for information, but because you can help define the messenger, not just the message, but sort of make sure that you're reaching people and, and, and as, as I like to say, meeting them where they are. We recruited in Garth Graham. He leads that group. A lot of uh, my team in clinical and other spaces still work with them. So I just want to for, for, for people to understand from the moment I walked in the door, basically, um, my remit, my work, has been not only to think about how we're going to help the healthcare sector, but what are we going to do um, to, uh, to see that there's authoritative information on all of our platforms. And it's quite frankly one of the things that's been most exciting to me about the company because we know that we can reach literally billions of people and give them good information to help them make better choices about their health or to navigate their care journey. Yeah, so when you think about that, that's such, it feels like such a broad remit, like that's billions of people. Well, How... I'm a general internist, so I'm really yeah. used to broad, <laughs> to broad remit. Fair enough, fair enough. But how, I guess I want you to stay focused and I want to ask a really specific question, which yeah. is, you know, like if you had to pick just one project that you're the most excited about or you're obsessing about at this given moment, what would it be within Google? I'm not going to pick amongst my children. Okay. But I, but I will tell you that, that um, you know, l let me just go back a second and talk about this, uh, this chief health officer role because it'll help you and everybody sort of think about how the company's thinking about health. 
The word health in my title is really intentional. It, it, it's meant to convey this idea that for us as a company, our philosophy is, yes, great medical care matters. However, there's more to health than health care. So we have to address the social determinants of health. We have to understand how to undo racism, the structural and otherwise in the system. How do our models drive fairness um, and, and democratize access to not only great care, but great, great health. So as the chief health officer then, the team that, that I have guides Google for its work in the authoritative information area, our regulated medical products, uh, and also employee health and safety. I, I think like many people, I've been very focused on our employees for the last couple of years because of the pandemic. Though so much of what we've learned about education of, around say testing or vaccines or how to do better forecasting has been applicable to the work that we've, that we've done outside. So I won't directly answer your question, but I'd be happy to, to, to give a few spotlights in those areas if you if you wanted me to, to share more. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough, I get it. Um, well, but I guess it leads me to another question, which is, you know, I think a lot about how companies kind of see health as a way to grow their business in different ways, right? Like we see, um, you know, companies like retail giants try to crack into this. You see tech guys come in here, but a lot of them come in with this idea that they can tap into this massive, almost $4 trillion healthcare industry and you know, make this a profitable business. Is that, it, it, to me, it sounds like education and prevention and those kind of topics don't necessarily jive with that kind of mandate, but I'd be curious to get your perspective on, you know, like. Do you, have, do you feel the pressure to build this into a business? I definitely don't. And, and you know, I, think, I think that you'll hear this from a lot of people on the team. Our you know, get up every morning raison d'etre is impact. It's helping billions around the world be healthier. It's, it's doing that because it's a means to an end. It's a means to well-being. It's a means to people having the kind of opportunity and, and quality of life that, that they want to have. It's built into the DNA of the company and the way we think about it, which going back to sort of the iteration we're on now is why it's not just one product area or one department. We really are thinking uh, about how we weave health into all parts of our business. Mm -hmm. Because if we do that, it's good for the user, which is good for customers, which is good for business, right? So it just makes sense to us that we want to make sure that when you turn to maps, that you can find information that helps you navigate your care experience. Is this doctor take Medicare? You know, what kind of insurance do they take? Is there telehealth available near me? So we're looking for every opportunity that we can to weave health into the work that we're doing. Yeah, I think the way you kind of phrased it in an earlier conversation was, um, you know, you don't have your your mandate isn't necessarily to create a profitable PNL. And I just was curious, like, do you see that as a, a blessing or as a curse? Like, <laughs> um, well, I. I tell you what I think is that the blessing that we have is that we're a consumer facing company. And I think that's what's especially different for me than other roles that I've had. You know, I practiced medicine for a couple of decades and you're doing a lot of um, you know, one to one education and conversation and uh, helping people in the clinic or the hospital. And I think that the, the ways that I learned to uh, get more information out through public health, for example, were a lot more clunky than we have now. I think you see a through line, meaning that you go on the radio or on television, you try to tell people the water's safe to drink or time to get your flu shot. And those things work on the, uh, at the local level though. The, the, the pull that we have as a company of people wanting information about their health. And some of it, yes, is you know how to get your COVID shot and where to go. But um, some of it is, is also really helping people to have more sense of control. Um, so, so some of the ways that we can help people is with wearables, like with Fitbit, and we can help give some personalized insights that um, give people more sense of whether they're being healthy, how to get healthy. So there's all these layers is where I'm going with this, Lydia. And I think that for me that it's almost an endless array of opportunities for us to be there when people are, are, need help, to help our partners reach folks. And it's quite frankly something that, that we really understand, um, I think, is, is sort of how to how to be a B2C company, how to, how to work with consumers. And, and I was in the medical establishment for a long time. And even public health, which is pretty consumer oriented, is really has a slightly different way of, of helping people navigate their, their health journey. So it's a, I very much enjoyed the learnings you know, of, of how it is that people are seeking information and how to make sure that we're, we're there for them when they need us. So maybe more on the blessing side than- Definitely on the okay. blessing side. Oh, I have the best job in the world. I just want you all <laughs> to know that. Um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty grateful.
That's nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, just to drill in on that a little bit more then, you know, like I think one thing as a business reporter I look out for is, is you know, is the company succeeding and you can kind of look at the business line. So I guess my question to you is, how will you know when you've succeeded? Like what, what will success look like for Google Health? Yeah, we're asking ourselves that a lot <laughs> every day. And, you know, I think, uh, first of all, obviously in areas where we have a product, we would look at, you know, reach of cloud with customers. We would look at sales of wearables or devices, you know, like a Nest. We, we would also look at the number of people who sought information on our platform. So I mentioned YouTube and COVID earlier. Information that we put there um, that, that came from the World Health Organization to help people navigate to their website. We've had more than 600 billion impressions. So we, we know that we can reach people and, and sort of quantify that kind of a process. We also know, you know that, that we can get the feedback from the doctor at the bedside who's you know, using a tool like Care Studio, mm -hmm. who says, oh, I found that this person was allergic to a medication and I didn't see that in the regular medical record. But we're really stepping back and thinking a lot bigger than that. It's not about only a product or a service or even a, an, AI, an AI tool that helps in, in one particular area. And, and just back to the kind of strategy um, broadly is first, you know, can we impact billions? Will we know if we've, if we've helped people be healthier around the world in an equitable way? Then thinking about consumers, um, we ask ourselves, can, can we provide high quality information that helps them navigate their, their, their broad health journey? And then are there ways that we can provide more personalized insights for them um, through, through some tools? The second area is about caregivers, and there are probably more quantifiable ways uh, to, to, to track that. I mean, I think the healthcare sector is pretty experienced in measuring improvements in quality, efficiency, effectiveness. Really excited that the healthcare system is now holding itself accountable around equity. Mm -hmm. We want to also make a difference in that space. And, and in some of our, our you know, other tools that we would use for the care system, like AI, we would say, is there a way that we could see a difference in a national cancer screening program because we were able to, to put an AI tool in place that would uh, reduce the time to diagnosis and treatment? We're working with the National Health Service on, on efforts like that. So there are some big, big, bolder ways that we want to make a difference. And I just want to mention one other area, which is about context. Um, since, since we're talking about health and that health is more than health care, this is another, another space where we're really committed to understanding if we can help people understand the assets in their community, healthy food, green spaces, the threats maybe in their community like wildfires, mm -hmm. and also give some tools to the public health community uh, and others that can do some better job of forecasting where health is going, whether that's a virus uh, or a mental health or substance use disorder. So we're asking ourselves in a deep way, beyond what a product does, how can we think more globally about how we're making a difference? We would welcome partners um, who want to help us think through it. But we're on a long journey here, and, and we're very committed to doing this over, over the course of the next many years. Sweet. Yeah, I think I got there. Um, three C's: um, context, consumers, caregivers. caregivers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it's three buckets. I can handle buckets. What you guys do gets so complicated so quickly. You so can see. You can see the slide easier. right now, yeah. can't you? With the three. <laughs> I'm sorry. What are they? I like it. Um, yeah, and I think that brings me. I, I kind of want to ask that question in a different way, which is you. You talked a little bit about what brought you to Google in the first mm -hmm. place, um, but you know, one of the big things I think about in any job is what can you do here that you can't do somewhere else? So I asked that question to you. What can you do at Google or within a tech company that you weren't able to do in your career in government and public health? Yeah, you know, um, I am very grateful um, for this opportunity. And, and I still, you know, I, I still think that I would have not ever expected that I would have uh, an opportunity like this. I, I, I think, you know, I grew up, um, um, as a poor kid, um, my dad left when I was five. My mom had a high school education. We um, didn't have much, but what we had was unconditional love for my mom and a real uh, drive for her to say, you gotta get an education, it's your way out of poverty. And I just fell in love with marrying up these ideas of science and helping people. My mom was a really big give back person, and so I modeled that. And I just um, said, well, I'm gonna be a doctor. I honestly, Lydia, I had no idea what was involved in that. I didn't know any doctors personally. But went for it and um, was able to, um, against sociodemographic odds, get to medical school. Loved practicing medicine um, and loved teaching medicine. It was it, so there was nothing wrong with that kind of work. Um, my husband's a 
practicing physician and I still like, just love hearing him come home and talk about the people he could help. But I felt myself drawn over each, you know, encounter with the patient, over each role that I had, to thinking about the system. You know, I mean, just sort of, I could provide great quality care to that patient in front of me, but if they didn't, you know, um, had access challenges uh, to the clinic because we didn't have a, um, a culturally or linguistically appropriate system, it wasn't going to help them. So system level change at the healthcare system was like my next part of the journey. Then I got pulled into public health because of Hurricane Katrina mm -hmm. as I understood more about how important things like housing and transportation were to my patient's health. And that led me to this public service pathway of at the local level, another great job, highly recommend, <laughs> local health commissioner to anybody, anytime, was asked to, to take some of those learnings about access to care and social determinants to the federal government, serve there. Um, and I, I, I say, to, say often I was ruined by public service because I loved it so much. I love this sort of sense of everyone everywhere. Well, that's what I get to do at Google. You know, I think when, when they called, I was like, uh, Yes, <laughs> I would be very excited to learn more. I think the idea that it's about impact, it's about billions, it's about equity, it's about really thinking about how to directly work with people in the end communities to give them the tools and the information that give them more control and that give them a sense of their ownership, but also some power in that equation with the care system. And I think, you know, just as I think back to those patients I took care of in clinic, that was often so much of the thing for them. They didn't have the, the vocabulary, they didn't have some of the tools, they didn't feel like, they didn't understand they had power in, in, in that equation. And so I'd say, for me, what I get to do here is, is and they, we say this a lot, it's about scaling, but it's really about the system in which people operate. And I just have one more thing that I want to mention, because one, one of the other reasons I said yes um, to come into Google is that this company understands that Yes, we do need to do a lot to improve medical care and health care, but health is a lot more than that. And we're with people all across their life flow when they're making decisions about food to buy or where to go exercise, or um, when, they're, when they're trying to learn more about you know, um, how to, how to, um, whether or not they should get a flu shot. And, and so the fact that, that we, we can do those health things, but then also we have programs around education and economic opportunity. And this is for me then this marrying together of great care and addressing the social determinants of health and equity, mm -hmm. uh, sort of all in one, in one company where there's this ethos of we're gonna, we're gonna be there for people in all those moments when they turn to us. Definitely. Yeah, and I'd love for you to tell me more about that. Specifically, you know, when we think about scale, I think of it's hard. It's easy to get removed from the situation. Like, how do you still do you do you have a chance to still feel grounded and to connect with those end communities that you're trying to reach? The pandemic has made that so hard, hasn't yeah. it? You know, um, I uh, stopped practicing medicine about four years ago, and and that really hurt. You mm -hmm. know, because in that moment in the room, you have this, you know, I learned so much from my patients about their struggles and, and their challenges and the systems in which we were working. When I say the pandemic made it hard is that just when I started the job, I did something I had done in my other roles at, when I was a national uh, service or a uh, health commissioner, and that was listening sessions. Mm -hmm. To have a chance to sit, sit down and just kind of uh, hear um, what's on people's minds and how we can be helpful. I'm very looking forward to um, having an opportunity to be, uh, you know, in real life with people again and hear and learn. Though there are other ways that we can get there, and, and I'll just um, call out my team um, that is, uh, we, we strive to have a group of folks that have lived experiences that are varied, that, uh, so we don't want a cookie cutter, you know, everybody's got the Ivy League, sorry, um, approach. We want, we want to have people who have really grown up on the dirt road or in Appalachia or wherever that is because that matters as you're building an inclusive product, an inclusive set of information, you have to make sure that you've got the people on the team who understand that and you're also listening very openly and carefully to what you're doing right and wrong. So staying grounded, super important. We've tried to do that. We did do some virtual listening sessions, by the way, but they're just not quite the same. Like you just get that little other stuff when you're grabbing the coffee in the styrofoam cup and I very much miss that and I'm looking forward to endemic and not pandemic. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing what comes out of Google's next chapter, but Karen, thanks so much for talking with me on stage today. Thank you, thank fun. you very much. Thank you guys. Bye.